Okay then, right. Let's get to, let's get started. Welcome, uh, welcome to everyone. Thank you for joining this uh, webinar hosted by North Yorkshire Sport um, and our panel of guests. Um, my name is George Cull. Uh, I work for North Yorkshire Sport, uh, and I, my job tonight is just merely to, to host this panel and to host this discussion um, and to let the people on on the, the the panel kind of speak as much as they can. Um, before we do get going and, and, and get into the, the meat of the topic uh, of mental health, I just want to run through a few domestics to make sure that everyone, um, uh, that we look after everyone and that, that we kind of have a, as an effective a webinar as possible. So um, just a reminder for everyone to, to stay muted, uh, to make sure you're not sharing your camera. I think we've managed to disable all of that, um, but just in case, please don't do that as we end up in a, a very messy webinar we've got. Uh, in excess of 120 odd people on this on this call, um, we do want some interaction. We do want you to to make some of your own points or ask your questions as we go along. So do use the chat box. Um, we have another colleague from North Yorkshire Sport, um, Damien, who will be manning that chat box and and, and looking after the stuff in there. I'll also be posting links as well. Um, we are recording this session. We're going to put it on on YouTube, and and so it is available to watch back or to share with other colleagues or other friends uh, and as I said we'll, we'll kind of um, because of the nature of the, the topic it is a tough topic it is an emotive topic for, for a lot of people and um, as we go out through the session we've got um, a couple of slides which which will signpost you to links to um, various support lines both local and national so if you do feel you need to take that up then hopefully we'll, we'll help signpost you in the right direction for some support. Um, a couple of things uh, extra from that. Um, we're going to be sat down for about an hour. So um, if you get a chance during the, the webinar to get up and move around, um, you're not sat for an hour, um, keep the, the kind of blood flowing around your joints, um, that would be useful. So no one can see you. So um, it doesn't matter if you get up and, and, and silly or anything like that. Um, towards the end of it, um, we will be... Um, uh, uh, putting up a feedback form um, which we do ask you to complete and um, really helps us understand if this has been um, useful for people or helps us understand what it is that we um, may be able to do in the future. Um, so the next thing I'm going to do is now is to introduce our, our panel for this evening um, and I'm going to say the names in the order I can see them on the screen so um, there is no um, preference in terms of uh, in terms of um, who I'm asking first, but the first one I can see is, is Glenn. So, Glenn, would you like to introduce yourself? George, yeah, my name is Glenn Hilton. I'm a head coach of our club, and I also coach uh, really groups uh, throughout the club uh, for the council, run mental health groups, running groups also for my colleagues as well. Brilliant. Thank you there, Glenn. Uh, and if, um, and I'll move to Ben. Hello, I'm Ben. Uh, I'm an ambassador for CALM, the uh, suicide prevention charity. Uh, I ran a lot of Yorkshire once, raising money for them, and since then started the Early Bird Run Crew, which is a community-led running group that meets in Harrogate and Nairsborough, and looking now to grow that uh, across the Yorkshire region. Brilliant. Next, I've got Hayley. Hi everyone, um, I'm Hayley Jarvis. I'm the Head of Physical Activity at Mines. So I've been with the charity five years with a huge remit from getting people active for their mental health through to elite sport. Um, I'm a volunteer at Dud Dudley Mind and I'm quite open about my own personal experiences um, of mental health problems. Thank you Hayley and welcome and thanks for, for joining us there. Uh, Hannah, on to you next. Hi, I'm Hannah, so I'm a freelance writer and I started off writing about my experiences of homelessness and PTSD and now I kind of just write about anything social injustice related um, and I'm also an avid surfer as well. Excellent, thank you Hannah. Ryan, if we move on to you next. Hi, I'm Ryan. Um, I'm local-ish to the North Yorkshire area. Um, I'm a big advocate for mental health and um, trying to make awareness um, and I'm through some of these people I um, do running and fitness so yeah me. Brilliant thank you very much and last but not least uh, Anita. Hello good evening my name's Anita and um, I'm a registered mental health nurse um, I currently work at the University of York um, as a nurse lecturer. Um, I am a keen marathon runner 
Um, and I like talking about mental health with people that I run with, and I'm also a running leader in a local group up in Teesside. So thank you. Brilliant. Thank you all there. Um, and hopefully you can see that uh, I'm sharing my screen at the moment, um, if I've grasped the technology. Uh, all of us are on uh, Twitter, um, and you can contact us uh, by there or send any nice, nice tweets. Um, we'll put that up again later. But, uh, um, we've also got a hashtag for tonight, which is my mind matters uh, at North Yorkshire Spot are there as well. Um, so just put that up there. Uh, the, the next thing I've kind of got to say before we, we kind of jump into to some of the, the introduction and, and context setting um, is around what tonight is. Um, and, and very much for us, this is about um, hearing from the, the guys on the panel and hearing about um, their story and what they've done and how where physical activity plays a role in that. Um, this isn't um, a, a lecture, this isn't about presenting medical facts as such, this is about um, people, their real experience, people who work in the field or people who've actually got lived experience themselves. Um, what we really want to do through that is through and through those stories is, is really tell some of that inspiration gets me that inspiration and and um and give you ideas as to if it's your mental health how you may look at, at, at approaching things or doing things yourself or if you're working with people the same um so we really hope that's what you take from tonight is a bit of inspiration um and it's really quite um well timed in terms of the the background to all of this because um it is it is mental health awareness week this week um and the theme is kindness so um, it's very appropriate to be having this, this conversation about mental health, although I think it's always probably appropriate to be having a conversation about mental health. Um, so since lockdown began, we've moved from our permitted one hour exercise per day, to that being eased and that being um, an unlimited amount, which for us in the, the kind of sport and physical activity world is absolutely fantastic. Um, we do acknowledge that these are potentially troubling, troubling times for people with mental health issues. And we need to acknowledge that um, there's a raft of wonderful services that are offered as best as they can in some really you know, difficult circumstances. Um, and from that, we do get some um, a picture painted of what it's like out there. And we can't escape stuff as uh, reports such as the Centre for Mental Health, who have forecasted half a million more people will experience a mental health difficulty during this coronavirus. Um, that could be even more if there's a second wave um, or if there's lasting damage to the, to the economy. Um, and um, never a nice one talking about children and young people, but, but we've also um, heard reports from Childline around increased number of calls from young people, particularly things around isolation, anxiety, self-harm, um, and suicidal thoughts. Um, so, the, the, you know, the issue is absolutely real, and it's really important that we're not talking about it in places like tonight. Um, in terms of how we're seeing that link with physical activity, um, Sport England do a weekly survey with, with Comres, which kind of gets that, that health check of the nation. And about two thirds of the population are reporting that they're using exercise to help manage their mental health, um, which always could be more, um, but it's great that people are seeing that link and are making that conscious decision themselves. Um, and 60% of the population now think it's more important to be physically active at during coronavirus at this moment so people are starting to see see that link and really um uh, and really take that decision to get active um so i'm now going to start with the panel start with the conversations uh, and i'm going to go to to Haley first um, and really just to give give us that scene setting around what actually is mental health um so over to you Haley. Hi, um, happy Mental Health Awareness Week. Uh, I hope, firstly, I want to say I hope you're all being kind to yourself. So, yeah, I think mental health has been a real shift. It's something that we all have. Um, in the past, we haven't liked talking about it. So it is defined as this state of well-being in which every individual can realise his or her own potential, can cope with the normal stresses of life. And I think that one's really interesting, particularly in the, the climate that we're in. It's about being able to work productively and fruitfully and contribute to your community. So our mental health affects how we think, how we feel, 
how we behave and we're all on this con continuum you often hear people say oh i haven't got mental health because they automatically jump to mental health problem or mental health conditions or issues when people are, are unwell but actually we're all on that continuum and I, we all have good days and bad days and at the moment probably life feels like a bit of a roller coaster but I, I guess for us, um, one thing that we always want to stress is when bad days turn into bad weeks, that's kind of an indication that we, we might be having a problem. So mental health is something we all should talk about, we've, we've all got, um, but we are all on that continuum. And there's a real differentiate, differ, differentiation between sort of good mental health and when it's becoming um, a, bit of a, a bit of a problem. You're muted, mate. I muted myself there to try and keep everything quiet. So um, just moving on to kind of Anita and thinking more from that um, with your kind of medical background and, uh, and things like that. Um, could you just take that a bit further in terms of the, the sort of range of mental health um, issues that we may see um, and how they may manifest themselves and, and what are some of the links of physical activity? So bringing more of that science side of things to it. Yeah. Um... To follow on from what Hurley said, I thought your definition of what mental health is was really helpful, Hurley. And what I'm just going to present now might be a little bit drier. Um, but we probably all have different understandings and explanations for why people might experience mental ill health or they might experience particular symptoms. And if you were to debate this, it's probably three things that people would come up with. Some people would believe there's a biological reason for mental ill health um, and that there's a genetic reason. Other people would say, well, it's more psychological. It's to do with early experiences in childhood. It might be to do with trauma, um, having a really rough time. Other people would relate it to the here and now. So it might be that people are in really difficult home situations, um, difficult relationships, um, and different people will have different explanations for why they experience mental ill health. And it's not that anyone's right or wrong, it's different things for different people. Often people's, people's mental ill health can be triggered by um, something happening. So it could be a bereavement, it could be stress at work, it could actually be working at home in the coronavirus pandemic is very stressful and different. Um, so the common mental health problems that we will come across are clearly anxiety at the moment. Um, I heard something on the news yesterday that 50% of the population are reporting to be experiencing some type of anxiety at the moment. Um, I guess another common mental health problem is low mood which can lead to depression and often with low mood people just you know kind of lose the motivation they lose interest in things their appetite might be poor and just don't enjoy things as much as they used to do so um, and then i guess we've got more serious mental health problems like um, what people might refer to as voice hearing or having really difficult paranoid thoughts some people might refer to that as psychosis um, everyone's mental health can be triggered by any difficult or stressful situation. Um, exercise, particularly running, is a really, really good therapy for any um, mental ill health or maintaining your mental health. I personally run for clarity of thought and to give me more motivation. And generally, if I have a really good running routine, I can work harder, I can concentrate better, and I can probably be more patient with people around me. Just to round off what I'm saying, the big key thing, um, when you exercise, when you run, when you surf probably, um, is that we all release what are called endorphins. Endorphins make us feel good, they help with any pain we've got, and they work um, as a way of elevating our mood. Um, so I guess that's the link between physical exercise and mental health and what happens physically with our bodies. So I'm going to stop there because I don't want to cut into what other people might say, but I'm prepared to come back for any questions or comments later. Thank, thank you, Anita. I think it's definitely useful for us to get that, that kind of context of where, where it all sits and, and, and that. And I think, you know, um, certainly 
um, I'm sure you'll have a lot more to learn both personally and professionally around that. And I think some of the things you mentioned there will get picked up by other members of the, the panel as well. Um, I'm going to kind of move the, the conversation on a little bit now and and um, uh, and focusing really on 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 Glenn for a, for a little bit around some of the work that that you do as as a, an athletics coach because it, it's not just being an athletics coach. So Glenn, do you kind of want to talk to us a little bit about some of the the groups that you work with around um, Couch to 5K and running? Absolutely, George. You know, I, I uh, myself and David Earl from Hamilton District Council in in 2016. We had the idea to start um, some secondary care running and walking groups um, and uh, Hamilton Council is still heavily involved with us. Um, basically started off um, running uh, running and walking groups um, in North Allerton um, for secondary care patients um, and it just snowballed from, from there and you know, the guys, they, they, they rock up on a, on, a, on a Thursday here in North Allerton um, and you know, they, they run, they walk. Uh, we have a coffee afterwards, you know, and people share different stories. Um, you know, it's, it's 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 social isolation that people are in as well with mental health problems, don't forget. So, you know, it's it's getting people out of the house. People have gone on to do park runs, um, half marathons through these these groups that are set up now, not just in North Allerton, but all, all around the all around the county. Um, you know, a massive pat on the back to, to North Yorkshire County Council for, for giving me that opportunity. Um, guys of you know Ryan is one of the members uh, of the group. Um, hopefully he'll do his first Great North this year, um, and um, he'll go on and tell you a bit about his story later. But um, it's just yeah, it's just absolute music to my. I absolutely you know love to just make a little bit of a difference, and I never thought when I started the groups off four years ago that we were where we are now. Um, we have coaches like Lucy who's involved and. And others as well, you know, we've got coached up at North Yorkshire County Council have put funding into, and uh, uh, you know, all our guys who come to running important groups have just absolutely benefited from it immensely, really, and I'm, and I'm dead proud. Can I can I just add on that bit? Is that all right? I, I mean, you make a really good point there, Glenn, and something we found from our, our research that the the physical activity is really important because of the endorphins and the the balance of the cortisol levels to manage our stress. But actually, our research with Loughborough University showed that it's the social connections, and particularly when there's that peer-to-peer -peer support, it really strengthens mental well-being. So it sounds like you guys are doing a great job with the the running groups, and that people are like going on and supporting one another. That that social time is actually as important as the physical activity. Absolutely, you'll find people you know they come to the groups for the first time after I twisted their arm and the best and the coaches and then you know they find confidence by coming out and running with us and walking we go all over the you know the place we don't just stay in in North Allerton we'll, we'll go you know towards more places and really scenic routes and people get confidence from that and we'll go on and join other groups as well and as I say we'll go on and do half marathons and you know 5k's and it's just you know make a lot of friendships along the way as well and the confidence is uh, it's brilliant and when the guys do get discharged which is sad to see them go but it's it's brilliant Side of the coin because you know you know you've played your part in, in getting somebody well again and um you know we signpost them again the running groups the running clubs as well um which is which is absolutely brilliant you know is that okay yeah fan fantastic glenn and, and i suppose i'll start this question with you and then move on to the the rest of the panel but um what's your kind of sense of the mood out there particularly thinking about the the groups that you're um, regularly support and actually that's just um, cut and, and gone um, how are the guys getting on are they managing to keep stuff going yeah they are you know I sort of got around everybody on the phone um, drawn up some schedule email to people and, you know the coaches have done the same and, and are chipping in everybody from all the groups across the county whether it be my North Yorkshire County Council colleagues or you know the, the mental health walking groups they all I've got out and you know, thank goodness, some exercise and, and it's really, really helping. Um, I also worked in the community mental health team, um, going back and help out, and actually things are, are really good. It's more I find jobs, people you know that I know in the street or on social media that are, that are texting me or me for training schedule, struggling a little from fifteen training schedules, various people around like that. Uh, hopefully they'll, they'll benefit 
Excellent. Thank you, guys. I'm not sure if it's my internet or, or yours, but you were breaking up towards the end there, but I got the gist of it. Um, uh, there's a couple of comments coming on the chat now, actually. Um, uh, someone from uh, Veterans Charity wants to link up with you. Um, so we'll put you in touch there, uh, but certainly other colleagues as well saying how, how much of a, how much they benefit from the groups as well. Um, so opening it out to the kind of the rest of the panel around um, just a bit of a, a temperature check around what are you sensing out there amongst friends, family, what's the mood like, what are people you know, is there lots of fear, anxiety, panic, is are people quite um, calm, are we making a big, a big deal of sort of lockdown, coronavirus, what's the, what's the mood, I'll kind of throw it up and for whoever wants to answer, jump in first, Anna you, you moved first so you go first. So I think it's really mixed. So a lot of people that I know that struggle with their mental health normally have got this kind of strange sense of calm at the moment. Um, and I know like for me, the first few weeks, it was like the rest of the world had kind of caught up to my normal levels of anxiety. Um, but then when I speak to people that don't normally struggle with their mental health, they seem uh, to be struggling a lot more. I don't think there's a single person I've spoken to that's not, suffering with some kind of level of anxiety Real. yeah we're, we're certainly seeing um at mind that uh isolation's a key factor and we've we've currently got a survey out and getting uh for one for adults and one for children and young people we're getting weekly feedback so we, we're certainly seeing some themes coming through so particularly people that have eating disorders post-traumatic stress disorder ocd um, and personality disorders are really struggling right now. 60% um, of people's mental health has got worse and we're seeing lots of people using unhealthy coping strategies. So eating too much or too little, lots of problems around um, alcohol as well. Um, and a third of people are saying that they didn't think their um, mental health was uh, an, a big enough a problem to get get help and support. And I've certainly seen from uh, my, my group, we've took lots of things virtually and it's, it is that good days and bad days that, that, that uh, really resonate, Hannah, with what you said about people feeling like they're catching up with the rest of the world in terms of anxiety levels. Um, and um, but also then it becoming the isolation as it's going on for a long time, really, really challenging because all, all those usual places where people get support and the need for face to face and human contact. We've got Zoom. It's great, but it doesn't work for everyone. And we know lots of um, I know lots of my runners aren't on it, choose not to be on social media or don't have the means um, because of their mental health. So, yeah, it's definitely a real, real challenge. And, and just a plea, if anyone does work with children and young people, we, we are really um, looking for more people to, to feed feedback on the, on the survey. So um, maybe if we can share the link on here as well, that, that would be great. Brilliant. Anyone else want to kind of jump in? Yeah, I need to... Um, I'll just jump in quickly. You're asking what kind of the moods like out there and I think something that I'm seeing um, particularly where I work it's sort of quite a lot of tension a lot of pressure at the moment and people that don't exercise are probably more tense and losing the patience a little bit and getting more anxious um, in the running club that I run with um, people are missing the social aspect of it that you referred to Hayley when you meet as a running club or a group you, you try and train really hard but you also have great fun and you have a great laugh as well so i know people are missing that even though they're trying really hard to do some solo running and social distancing so i think it's a real mix out there definitely but exercise is helping a lot of people i know definitely thank you anyone else want to jump in No, that's fine. Right, we'll um, we'll we'll kind of move the the conversation on. So, um, that's been really good so far to get some of that background um, uh, background information to kind of get that feel of a of a mood there, um, uh, and can just see where things are at. I want to try something now, which is um, is a risk for me because I've learned how to do polls on um, Zoom today. So I'm going to try and just do a, a poll of the people that are on this webinar um, just to kind of get a couple of things. Now, this is entirely anonymous. There's no way of tracing anything back to anyone else of who said that. Um, so I believe you should now be able to see 
um, a, a poll. Yes, someone's completed it. That's brilliant. Um, this is not scientific research. We're not um, going to be presenting this to uh, a, as an official statistic or anything like that. It's just more of a to help us gauge the mood and a little bit to help me test out this new toy that I've got. Um, but we're asking the question um, uh, around since lockdown began, would you say your mental health has um, uh, improved a lot, a little, or deteriorated a little or a lot? Um, and uh, got 85% of people have, have voted so far, so that's a really good number. So the last couple are coming in. Um, I'm not sure if you can see the results, but I'll tell you them. Um, uh, but the biggest category overwhelmingly is uh, deteriorated a little. So that's uh, over 50 Fifty percent of people responding um, have said that, and and actually, uh, if you take deteriorate a little and a lot together, then we're up to sixty-one percent. So we're kind of um, roughly saying six out of ten of us have have, have had a, a negative impact on our on our mental health. So, um, thank you for 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 completing that, um, uh, and I will just close that down. Um, and then now we want to move on, um, or we'll move on shortly to, to hearing people's stories about how, what link they've made with physical activity and what that's done for them and how that's helped them. And I'm going to bring uh, shortly Ben, um, Ryan and Hannah in to, to give us a bit of an overview of their stories, which um, I think I've heard them all before in various forms, um, but never get tired of, um, of hearing them and uh, the kind of inspiration from, um, from how they've used that. Um, but uh, the next one I want to do is ask a second question, um, which I will launch now. Um, and so this one does focus on your physical activity. Um, and again, is since lockdown began, would you say your physical activity has gone up, gone down, uh, stayed broadly the same? So again, this is anonymous. We're not coming to, uh, to, to chase anyone to say you should be more active. Um, uh, but we just want to kind of, again, gauge what, what it's like out there for people. So this one feels a little bit more, a little bit more balanced. So we've got 92 people have, uh, have completed that there. Uh, we're up to 100 now. So, uh, yes, definitely a bit more balanced. So we've got 46% are saying... Um, their physical activity levels have gone up, either by a lot or a little. 16% uh, staying, staying the same, and 39% saying they've decreased. Um, so uh, that seems to be a little bit reflective of national stuff, where some people are saying, this has been um, a wonderful opportunity for me to do more. I've got more time, I'm working from home, etc. But then for some people, that pressure of homeschooling of juggling jobs and 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 looking after kids and things like that has actually meant they, they've lost their me time they've lost their escape so um it, it's kind of going off two ways for people so i'm um, really kind of um interesting to see that and i think that's sharing the results so you can now see the results um on there so um, thank you for, for for doing that that's really kind of useful for us to to just get that feel out there uh, so as I said, the next bit um, I want to do is kind of bring in um, Ryan, Ben and, and Hannah, and they're all going to spend about five minutes each, if we can keep them to that. Um, just talking a little bit about some of their personal experience, some of the, um, some of the things they've done, some of the issues they've faced. Um, and, and again, as I said, I find these really kind of quite inspiring and really great to listen to. Um, and I'm working most things by alphabetical order tonight, so um, that means I'm coming to Ben um, first. So Ben, do you want to tell us a bit about some of your running exploits? Yeah, okay. Um, so a couple of years ago, uh, at the back end of 2016, I went through uh, what I call my wobbly patch. It's like a really nasty bout of depression. I had a lot of um, changes in my life around that time. I broke up with a long-term girlfriend. Uh, I had loads of problems at work. And at 30 years old, found myself living on my own in a flat um, which wasn't where I thought I was going to be by the time I hit 30. Um, initially, I uh, handled it really badly. I started drinking more, uh, became really isolated and lonely, and um, yeah, found myself in a bit of a pickle. So I used running and going to the gym at that time to bring myself out the other side of that. And then when I kind of got myself 
a bit better, I decided I wanted to do some fundraising for Karma. Uh, so I uh, got trained up and uh, ran a, a lap of Yorkshire, which took me 18 days, 496 miles, I think it was. Should have run two miles up the road and back down around the lamppost, around it to a nice 500, but there we go. Um, and up until I did the running Yorkshire run, running for me was always a real kind of um, solo exploit. I was really kind of aware of how beneficial it was for my mental health and used it to keep myself on the straight and narrow. Um, but other than the occasional run with my sister, I was used to run my own. Um, but when I ran the lap, I ran with um, hundreds of people from all over the county. I wore a little GPS tra tracker on my, on my bag and built a little website and invited people out to come and, and, and run with me. And just, it was the most incredible experience. Met so many people who um, shared similar stories with me, some pretty heartbreaking stuff as well. Um, but I did meet a lot of community running groups. Um, so when I got back, I wanted to set something up uh, in Harrogate because there, there, there wasn't anything there. So I um, set up the Early Bird Run Crew. Uh, and we meet, or we did meet, until the coronavirus kicked off uh, every weekday morning at 6 and 6.30 a.m. at the Cenotaph, which is uh, the one mile in the middle of town, uh, and go for a 5K run together. Um, but you run at your own pace, so uh, it's not about how fast you are or how expensive your trainers are or anything like that. It's just a case of um, everybody meeting up and, and, and getting together and, and going for a run. Um, I, used to, I used to ride motorbikes, and I, there's, a, there's a place in Yorkshire called Squires, which is like a biker's cafe, and you use the analogy of I wanted to create like a, a biker's cafe for runners, uh, where you could just rock up and go for a, uh, meet, meet like-minded people and go for a run together. And it's, the impact's been amazing. I mean, from a, from a kind of personal point of view, um, it's really kept my head in the game and um, kept my running consistent. I'm a nightmare for uh, having a big weekend and then not training for a few weeks and it all going off the rails. So yeah, it's really helped to keep me accountable and I've made loads and loads of friends uh, and it's had some, some great impact on lots of people. And just before, I think it was about November time, we set up crew number two, which meets in Nairsbury, just a few miles down the road. They meet at their market cross every uh, weekday morning at 6.30. Um, and the plan is now to try and grow the crews uh, initially across Yorkshire and then hopefully across the country. Um, obviously, coronavirus has, has taken a little bit of a, a, a hit uh, on that front. Uh, so we just tomorrow, we're about to launch our early bird run crew t-shirts. So you'll be able to buy those online. That's a, a plug. <laughs> um, and yeah, all the profits of that are going to go to CARB. And then the, the premise is that whenever we come out of the back end of coronavirus and everything starts to calm down, then hopefully all these people who bought these t-shirts will start to be able to come together and, and run together in, uh, in the morning. So um, yeah, the, the only thing I wanted to say is that it's, it's not, the early bedroom crew isn't designed to be a mental health support group as such, but it's uh, we've got the CAM badge on there. We call ourselves a proud CAM collective, uh, and we acknowledge that running is beneficial to uh, all of our mental health and, and, and well-being, as Hayley said earlier. Um, that's another thing that I'm super, super passionate about. It, it grinds my grills when people talk about just negative mental health. You know, we all need to make an effort to keep our, our minds healthy um, as well as as well as our bodies. Um, so yeah, definitely. I um I do love the way that Ben just kind of casually just slips in there of yeah I just ran a lap of Yorkshire um uh, <laughs> yeah just you know just casually got out of my bed one day and ran a lap of Yorkshire so. it wasn't casual I promise yeah, you that yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure it wasn't um uh, but there's some really good stuff in there and I think what I'll probably do is is um, I'll bring Hannah in next and then we'll kind of um ask some questions of you all and, and pick up things that are coming through on the chat from, from you all. So we'll, we'll kind of um, I'll move over to kind of Hannah now. So if you give us a, a bit of your story, a bit of your background, please, Hannah. Yeah, of course. So uh, in late 2018, um, I started suffering with severe uh, PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder. Um, and at the same, like this, because of that, I ended up homeless. Um, so I, I was in a really bad place. I was like similar to Ben drinking far too much, taking drugs, self-harming, you know, just to try and deal with that. Um, 
and I ended up staying in hostels and supported lodgings placements and like emergency accommodation. Um, and then in around March last year, um, I was referred into a surf therapy program in Scarborough. Um, and literally I just fell in love with it. It was just the most calming thing. Um, and just, it, I can't even describe it. It's just like a feeling unlike any other, um, and similar to the others, like it's not just the surfing, it's the people you meet and um, the social aspect of it as well. Um, so I started, I did the six week surf therapy course um, and then I started volunteering with the WAVE project, which is kind of the same thing, but for kids. Um, so we give them a surf therapy kind of session every week. Um, and then I just carried on surfing myself as, as much as I could over summer, really. Um, and at the same time, I was still struggling quite badly because I didn't have anywhere to live as such. So I was still in hostels and different things. Um, and then February the 3rd this year, I finally got, kind of got my own flat um, after 403 days, I think it was, like being classed as homeless. Um, and then I kind of just started writing about my experiences and it kind of just took off a bit, really. Um, and it's been a bit mental. Um, but yeah. Um, I also volunteer at Scarborough Survivors now as well, so they help me massively. So if anyone's in Scarborough and, and needs some help, they've, they've got um, telephone lines. They've got about five telephone lines, I think, from 9.30 in the morning till 1am. Um, so, yeah. Excellent. Thank you, Hannah. And we're posting links as, as you were speaking there to some of the, the stuff that you shared. Um, and... Uh, you're obviously too modest to kind of mention it, but you've been um, nominated for an award. Do you want to tell us about that? Yeah. There now, so. Yeah, so I, the first few articles I kind of wrote and they got published in the Metro and the Independent. Um, and then someone, I still don't know who, um, nominated me for a National Diversity Award, which is via ITV News. Um, I'm guessing they, um, well, they obviously did that because I kind of shared my story um, and kind of the talking about my PTSD and kind of what led to that. Um, so I had a pretty rough childhood and, you know, a few lo events later in life. Um, so, I'm, yeah, if anyone wants to vote, yeah. a <laughs> little plug in there. We do not mind any shameless plugs at all. So uh, we've posted the link and it's going to go out on the follow up email as well. Um, uh, and it's on the website where people registered. So um, if you do want to um, uh, vote for Hannah, then then please, please do. We'd encourage it. You've um, got to um, verify the, the vote via an email link as well. Yeah, it's one of those, you put your details in, they send you an email and then you've got to click on the link. So, um, uh, but it's only a few extra seconds of your life. So please do, um, do consider that. Uh, right, we'll move on to, to Ryan now. And Ryan, do you want to share kind of your story? And I, I've heard you're a talker, so kind of <laughs> about five minutes. So see how you do. Yeah, um, so my story is, I go back to 2014, um, was diagnosed with depression, stress and anxiety, um, initially for the GP. Um, and at the time I was working, um, as a carer for looking after people with mental health disorders. Um, and it just took over me. I had no understanding of what was going on. Um, I'd gone through five different types of antidepressants. Some of them agreed with me, some of them didn't. Um, so it would see that for the next six years following on, um, I would end up in different mental health hospitals um, actually sectioned up to what the class is a P3, uh, which is quite a secure unit where I kind of have where I'm literally have someone arm length, if not closer, next to me, awake with me whilst I'm in bed, lit, can't do anything. Um, and we're talking 30 days and it rolls on. So yeah, and that, that went on for for a few years doing that um, until I got to a point where like, no, I, I can't live like this and I've got everything taken away from me. So I need to change. So I did. Um, I went along with the programs, the helps, the medication, the talking. It was rough, but I got there. And you know, since then I've met my better half. We've, you know, I've got, uh, we've had a child together. I've got another one on the way. Things were looking really well. Um, 
at the time I was living in Somerset and then last year I moved from Somerset up to North Yorkshire where my better half is from. Unfortunately when moved the house that we had found to be asbestos and so we weren't able to move in which meant that I had to live apart from my family and this went on from we moved up in May we didn't actually move in until August um, last year so it was a fair few months living apart in a town that I had no one didn't know anyone. Um, stay that my mental health took a drop it did and because I didn't have that support that I was used to um, and then, like I said, I didn't know anyone. It just, I did what I did, and I reached an all-time low. And yeah, I, I made, I made an attempt. But there was an inner voice, and a voice that I have heard before that told me not to, to reach out. And I reached out to the only person that I knew, and that was a housing officer at Broadacres. Um, and I went, help, quite literally, help. And then they put me onto their own mental health team who then from there put me onto the crisis team. And then I've got working with the crisis team and the community mental health team. So that was sort of July, August time. Come September, I get asked, do I want to do running and walking group? Now through the whole year since 2014, I've been offered this many a times. And I've not once tucked it up because it didn't interest me at all. But it's the only thing I've not done in all the years of dealing with this mental health so I went yeah all right let's give it a go you know and I did it and this is where I met the amazing Glenn Hilton down there absolutely he's a legend what you don't know about running ain't worth knowing to me really and I'll see you later. thank you fella thank you <laughs> and whatever when we talk about getting to groups and that community meeting him and then meeting other people and that one day a week for an hour and I was starting off walking two miles, just around the leisure centre, just doing loops. And then next minute, you know, he's like, oh, do you want to meet at half past six one morning? We'll go off and we'll have a little run. So, yeah, OK, let, let's do this. Rock up there. And next minute, you know, I'm doing my first 5K with Ben. I'm like, brilliant. And I'm not the only one. There are literally hundreds of people there. And this is half past six in the morning. I'm like, oh. I'm like, this is just like crazy. I'm thinking in my head, 5K is like hundreds of miles. And it, it's three miles, but for the first time, it might have well been. But I did it, and I did it in 30 minutes. And I was so proud of myself. I was just like, but then I wasn't alone. Like, you get into this, not even the finish line, the stopping point, and everyone's clapping your hands, and, you know, and it's just like, wow. Okay. And then from then on, you know, it's I've done park runs. Um, I was meant to have done the North Allerton 10K in... This weekend coming up, that's been cancelled. As Glenn said, I've got at the moment a place for the Great North Run, but since then I've been doing virtual runs um, and where I've been getting medals, so I set myself targets. But this passion that I've never had before that I go swimming, I've count myself as an active guy, I've done swimming, uh, downhill mountain biking, I like all that. But the passion I get from running, shoving on my headphones. And kind of switching off from the world and just run you know i love it and i thank these guys for doing it um but you know i wouldn't have known about it if i'd gone let's give it a go and all it takes was just to meet a couple of guys and just for for an hour and that's all it took and since then it's been amazing and through them i've met other people and are now part of a community hub in North Allerton, which supports people with mental health, loneliness, and respite. You know, it's, it's that point of contact before they go on to whatever program or club course they need. Um, and I've completely, completely missed it. The one thing that or I suffer with mentally, and I did get diagnosed with it, is something called borderline personality disorder. Um, it's something that's still quite unknown, um, but what I do know about it, I understand. I understand myself better now. Um, and during this lockdown, I'm not going to lie, I had a wobble. And, you know, I had some really negative thoughts. First thing I did was reach out. Um, fortunately, the crisis team was busy at the time, but I reached out to the next person, Glenn. And, you know, he got on my case and it lasted all of two weeks. I got the help that I needed. I got a short stint of medication because of the support that has been taken away because of the lockdown. Once this is all finished, 
you know, I'll be back to using my normal lockdown, uh, my normal support network. Um, but yeah, as you said, I like to talk. I do apologise. Um, that's me. Sorry. <laughs> That's absolutely fine, Ryan. There's not a chance I was ever going to interrupt you there or cut you off in the, in the middle of that. So um, uh, thank you all so much for, for sharing that. Um, I'm going to bring in other panel members now and just ask if any of you guys want to ask any questions of each other or anyone, uh, uh, anyone else or anyone's stories or build on any points that anyone's made. So Anita, you've got your hand. Just unmute yourself there. Brilliant. Ryan, yes. you know you said that you'd been offered walking and running before. Yeah. And you, you didn't take it up, you declined it. Yeah. In hindsight, do you wish you'd done it earlier? No. Um, no. I, 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 it's, I think it was that I had so many options. Um, and it just, I don't think it would have been right for me at the time. I don't think, you know, I had, I had family and friends where I was. Um, and I was, I had a lot of other different things going on. So I think to be offered it up here and have nothing, have a blank slate. Yeah. And so that was my only means, which meant that I was able to literally go all in it and enjoy it. Um, and for that, it's just another tool I've added to my box. So I don't, yeah, I think it came at a good time for me. Thanks, Ryan. No worries. I think that's a really important point though, isn't it? It's about the, the timing, because I know we got asked a, a question ahead of this about, um, about how we get more GPs to prescribe physical activity and it's certainly something that I came in five years ago with a real bit between my teeth that a nice guidelines state that um, physical activity should be prescribed for mild moderate depression and actually we know often that isn't the case and there's some some great resources and um, that we've worked with uh, uh, moving medicine to help um, help GPs and other medical providers to actually understand the benefits of being active. But then I hear from, we, we have an advisory group and we work with lots of people with their own personal experiences and they tell us how many barriers they face, but also how many negative experiences they have. I've done radio interviews and as a head of physical activity, I always say that physical activity is one of the tools in our toolbox, but there's many others and it's never necessarily a straight replacement or one or the other. And definitely it's really important that we don't shame medication because there's a place for that too. But I hear some of the really challenging um, experiences people have where it hasn't gone so well or where doctors have taken quite a lecturing tone with them and actually it's put them off or they've gone and had a bad experience the first time. I just wondered if anyone else had any sort of barriers because I think we're definite advocates of being active for mental health and definitely doing a lot with, with health providers as well. But sometimes um, even though people know it's good for them intrinsically, the, the barriers just feel massive. I didn't know if anyone else had experienced that. I think, I think, so go on, Ben, you go first, sir. I was just going to say, I've, um, uh, I used to be five or six stone heavier than I was now and um, was pretty sedentary for all of my 20s. And, um, and there was just no way that I was ever going to move. And still, my, um, my relationship with running is pretty fluid. Uh, and I ran, I ran a marathon PB in October last year, and that must have been like a bit of a milestone that I was kind of subconsciously heading for. Uh, and then once I achieved that, I kind of took the brakes off, and over the next period of few months, I, I kind of stopped running as much and put a bit of weight on and became a bit more lethargic. And by the time it got to Christmas, uh, I was like, all well, my friends know me as like the running bloke, and, and I wasn't running, you know? Uh, and I wasn't going down to the other bedroom crew as regularly as I would have liked to. And um, I answered the question earlier about how lockdown has affected my physical activity and I'm definitely up laughing I'm brilliant now because I've, I've kind of got the headspace to focus back on my running uh, I've lost a bit of weight again and I'm feeling great but um, I guess what I'm trying to say is that I try and absolutely live and breathe physical activity and um, mental health awareness and, and I find it really difficult sometimes as well so uh, and I've run loads of marathons in the lack of Yorkshire so I think people that are starting from zero for us to just say get outside and really or squaring out is, is really really difficult so i think that um we just need to be really mindful of that and think uh, about ways that we can introduce people to uh, to running and you know, i'm always desperate trying to get people down to the urban run training you know reinforcing that it's got nothing to do with pace or or anything like that just just come move outside even if you just even if you're just going and walking around the block to begin with that's, that's a massive help. When I started running, I literally couldn't run. I remember my first ever run, run, run my sister. 
Uh, and I couldn't run to the first lamp post without stopping and getting that breath and just, you know, how, how, how is this ever going to work? But I think the amazing thing about running is how quickly you uh, improve. You just need to get started. Uh, and very, very quickly, you'll, um, you'll get good at it. I always say, I don't need to like to swim. I always say that the problem with running is uh, it's really shit when you shit at running. Uh, but you get good really quickly. <laughs> I'll bleep that one out later. Sorry. <laughs> All right. Um, then you were gonna yeah. if you were wondering about on about barriers. I had this conversation with Anita um, before we came on. You know, obviously I said I set up the groups in in 2016, and I think um, one of the the barriers or, or concerns for people were you know um, was the level of antipsychotics that some some of the guys were on. You know, and obviously being the community mental health teams, um, you know, they were well monitored um, and checks were done with GPs, ECGs. Um, blood pressure, that sort of thing, um, and it can be. It absolutely can be that you know I've, I've had lots and lots of people, you know, run with me, do park runs that have been on, you know, antipsychotics, medication for depression. Um, if there's anybody listening, or if anybody knows of anybody um, tonight that you know that they think that's a barrier to them, then you know, see your GP. You know, get some some get the go ahead from them and and tell them what you're going to do because there's there is a barrier out there that you know people are scared that they're on. Antipsychotics and um, or, or a form of medication to help them. You know that you get that's it's not a barrier. You know if you get the right help, it can be done. I think that's great, and I think people like you guys tonight sharing your stories is so important. I guess I'm going to do a shameless plug that if you haven't seen it already, we've we developed some training to help uh, sports coaches and instructors to better understand mental health, mental health awareness for sport. That's now available free of charge. It's an online course. And it's been designed by people with mental health problems um, as well. So we've had a lot of people's real stories in there. I think that's really important. And I think the more people share and when designing programmes, talking to people they're trying to reach, I think, I think that's really, really key. But yeah, the, the voices of some of our, pan of our panel members really stand in my head that um, sometimes, you know, we, we just have to remember how it is for the people that are really struggling and facing all of those barriers. And I think it's often the simple things we can do, isn't it, to, to help. So. And something that you um, both Haley and Ben have touched on regarding barriers, but then obviously starting off slowly, because obviously the students have gone and said, yeah, you can go out for a run. That's part, of, even when we start just for an hour. The amount of people have gone out and they've gone straight for a run and they've ended up hurting themselves, which then meant they've ended up staying on the sofa and they can't move for weeks. Okay. They've ended up worse off. Um, so when I once when I said my better half, um, who's 20 weeks pregnant, is for her own safety and the safety of the baby it has to stay in. She can't even go to the supermarket. So I ended up doing all that. But we go out, we make an, uh, a, a choice, not a choice, we, we go out every twice a week. When we go for walks, we've got dogs, we go for, we go for good. We take the, um, um, our boys on bikes and scooters. And we go like for four mile walks. Um, and it just, it's that getting out in fresh air um, and I think now that some of the restrictions of we can go out longer and you can go out with friends as long as you're still keeping the social distance. So you can still have a bit of the community and go off for walks, but then you can build on that. You know, it's all like, well, if you can walk four miles or if you can walk two miles and it takes you an hour, okay, well, next time walk a little bit faster and see if it can take you 45 minutes or, you know, and then just... Do it slowly, but you're still getting out. You're still, you know, in, enjoying being outside, and you know, it's not so much of a barrier. But then, working slowly, don't go straight into it and end up hurting yourself and end up worse off. Um, yeah, I've just... yeah, that's it. It's an extremely valid point, and we got we, we can't all just jump jump into it and and start. Um, and be good at something straight away, kind of pretty much as, as Ben said as well. Um, uh, there's been a couple of questions on the chat, and one of them, one of them has been answered by Hannah with a, a resounding kind of yes. But I'll bring it into the to the forum for people's thoughts as well. Is that uh, someone uh, has asked about um, exercise helping with uh, with sleep, particularly if you're uh, sort of got anxiety or depression. Um, so what are people's experiences that? I know Hannah's an absolute, yes, it does help. Uh, so can, I, can I expand on that slightly? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, so for me, because I have uh, PTSD, uh, 
a massive thing for me is my sleep and nightmares especially um and i find that so i, I take medication to to help me sleep but even with that there's a lot of kind of anxiety about going to sleep but i find if i'm being exercised that's a lot less so it's a lot easier for me to get to sleep um so i don't know about everyone else with that one i'll just i'll add to that that um sleep is since my breakdown and dealing with medication sleep, my sleep patterns changed and then since the lockdown um because i'm not out as much i haven't i'm not as busy um that means that I haven't, I haven't burnt off as much energy, so I'm not sleeping well as night. And then as a father, I'm homeschooling the kids, and, you know, that's stress. And so come 8 o'clock in the evening, I am boiling, you know, I'm ready to explode. Um, and I know that I can happily sit down and watch a film, chill out with the missus, and be like, okay, I can, that'll sort me out mentally, but I will not sleep because it just, no, I'm not settled. So I'll go out for a run, um, and it could literally just be what I call a stress run, which is a two-miler, but I literally put my all in it. I come back sweating, I'm knackered. I have a shower, get, get, you know, get changed into bed. I know that, okay, mentally I'm sorted, physically I'm sorted, but I'm going to sleep well. If I don't sleep well, then the next day I'm going to be there with my sore head 10 times. You know, and it's just, it's not good for me, it's not good for the house. You know, and it's just, so yeah, so physical exercise of any kind, you know, is good for, for sleep. Um, but obviously just make, choose what that works well for you, not just go and do any. I think our message is that sleep is a, a core component of our, our mental health and affects our mood. You know, it's interlinked, isn't it? Even if you don't struggle with your mental health and you had a bad night's sleep, it affects how your mood is the next day. I think Lauren made a great point. It depends on the time of day. So I think evidence shows that if you exercise late in the evening, that can have a detrimental fact, uh, effect often on your mental, on, on your sleep. So it's, it's about timing and everyone, of course, is different. So it's a playing around with the time. But yeah, as our body tires, so does our mind. And I think the evidence backs that up. Um, but all about timing and finding what works for you. Yeah. And obviously also by getting out and using that time to sort of work out any stresses, any anxiety, any worries that are in your head mentally, you know, you use that time just to get rid of it all. As I say, go outside and when you're walking, running, whatever it is you are doing, talk, talk out loud, even if you're alone, or just and let the wind take it, because when you go back home, it's it's not there. Because if you do it at home, it's on the four walls, it's painted on the walls. If you do it outside, let the wind take it and it's done and dusted. Anita, you were going to come in? Yeah, I was just going to comment. We've been talking about sleep. Um, and Glenn and I did a talk on BBC Radio Tees recently. And one of the things we talked about for people looking after the self in these times was obviously exercise, running, getting outside. But we talked about maintaining your routine as much as you can, or a new routine. And that would include eating well, um, sort of remaining hydrated, drinking the right, the right kind of things, um, not and things like not listening to the news too much, not going on Facebook too much, where you might hear sort of not the accurate information. Um, and I think if people can have a routine, if it's a new routine, it's definitely going to help with sleep. And I know that for myself from when I let my routine go or I don't eat as well and things like that. So I think that fits Hayley with what you were saying and Ryan as well. So thank you. And it is, it, food is a, is a massive thing, I think, as well, um, and diet. Um, yeah, it, it just, it all comes together. And, but you don't, there is no answer. There is no recipe. There's no, there's no um, handy guide to say, sleep this long, eat this, run this, walk this. You know, it, it's tailor made. It's to your own. What I do works for me. It might not work for anyone else, but it works for me. Um, and so it's, that's through experience and literally trying everything. Going in, go, I, I come up with these, these wonderful ideas. Going into a restaurant, literally going to an all you can eat and trying bits of everything and what works for you. 
work for you. You know, it's <laughs> sorry, my mind just goes off on one. I do apologise. With a definite soundbite there for, for for sure. There, um, one of the things I I kind of of like, and it really expands on what you said there. On it, it kind of, um it works different for different people because there's almost two opposite ends of the spectrum there of Ryan, you talking a bit earlier about um, getting to sort of this time of night and thinking I need that release. I need to go and just, just get myself ready to almost have a sleep and to get the day done. Uh, and then um, Ben's early bird run crew is about getting up in what would be a few hours time um, before any, most people have got out of bed, these guys have gone and ran five or 10 K um, and I know from, from having been down a few times myself and seeing the feedback, you know, a lot of teachers um, do it because actually it's their productive thing done before the school day starts. And actually when they wouldn't get a chance to do it when they get home. So it's about them setting the day off right. And it's that setting the tone for the day. Um, and a lot have said that, haven't they, Ben? Yeah. Sorry, I was distracted by the comments and I was, I, I drifted off. <laughs> I just heard my name and then switched back in. <laughs> <laughs> say yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, what were you saying? Just about um, people valuing that six o'clock, six thirty start, and that's sets the tone for the day for them. Yeah, absolutely. I think, I think there's, it's so easy when you get towards the end of the day to make an excuse that you're tired, and um, you know, and there's and, 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 and there's plenty of excuses to start getting out. Having said that, since the lockdown started, I'm running less early in the morning and more in the evening. I'm going to go out this. And um, it's like Ryan said, it's about finding what works for you. And I think probably different things work at, at different times. Sometimes it gets to the end of the day and like you say, I'm super wound up and I just need to go let off some steam so I go out for a run. But most of the days when I'm, when I'm working in, in, uh, in normal life, uh, yeah, I like to go and really start and get it, get it in the bag and get my, get my head squared up ready for the day ahead. Excellent. That's, that's great. Um, I, I'm conscious of time. We did start a little bit late, but I don't want to take up entirely everyone's evening. So um, we'll, we'll, we'll kind of start to move towards wrapping up um, uh, uh, very soon. Um, one of the things I wanted to do with, the, with all the panel is to kind of go around you all and give you a, a, a last chance to make some kind of closing remarks, some closing comments, or, or give everyone a, a top tip of what, what's the, the biggest thing that works for you um, that you'd like to share with everyone else. So um, I'll kind of give you a few seconds to, to kind of think of that uh, and then I'll start putting you on the on the spot for that. So anything just to, to close um, and then I'll do a couple of bits of wrapping up. Uh, uh, we've got um, some links to support and, and some other things that we want to ask of people before they, uh, before they disappear. So um, who wants to go first with their sort of, uh, Glenn straight away now, this is what I like to see. So I'll go to Glenn first. Yeah, the, the best piece of advice I can give anybody, uh, George, out there at the moment, especially, is you know, get out there, do any form of exercise you can, uh, whether it be running, biking, walking. I know I've been running over 30 years and what a difference it makes, you know, to my mood and all the things we've discussed, like sleep and everything else as well. So best advice I can give people, doesn't have to be running, could be biking, stay walking, get out there and, uh, and enjoy it and you'll, you'll get the benefits for sure. That's brilliant. I think um, Hayley touched on this earlier, but I think uh, I think it's really super important, especially now, is feeling socially connected as well. So if, um, one thing that I'm really proud of about the Other Bedroom Crew is we've kept going. Everyone's still running and taking their selfies and posting in the Facebook groups and, uh, and online every day, and that's been really important to me. And I know a lot of the rest of the crew to to remain that feeling of, of, of part of the community as well. So if any of you want to join us, you'd be more than welcome. Find us on Facebook. Excellent. Hayley? Yeah, I, th I think for me, um, obviously getting active is, is so important, but also thinking about how you can get active at home. We've got res resources on our website. I'm really mindful of people that um, are shielding or vulnerable so they can't leave the house or maybe you've got children or it's difficult. So there's lots and lots of resources um, on Minds website, but also uh, more available. But I guess my takeaway is a quote that I heard uh, this weekend, it's, I think it's quite a famous one, but comparison is the thief of joy. It's a Roosevelt um, quote, you know, at the moment everyone's sort of seeing what people are doing on social media and it's do this, do that during during lockdown, but most, most important, sometimes you just need to do nothing and you need to just be happy, safe, content and present. So comparison is the thief of joy. Mm. I like that. Who wants to go next? Mm -hmm. 
Uh, Anita, did you? Yeah, you moved okay. first. I'll go next. I'll just say a few words. Keep your routine. Get outside every day. Get some exercise and eat well. That's it from me. <laughs> Brilliant, Ryan. Do you want to? Yeah. Um. Everyone's covered fitness. My big thing, and no surprise, is talk. <laughs> um. Is literally there's calm, there's mind. They're online. They have places, especially calm. I know are open from seven um, or from, no five p.m. till midnight. Online chats. You know, reach out, reach out to your crisis team, reach out to you, just talk, ask. If you don't understand or you don't feel right, just reach out and they can give you some advice and then go back to them afterwards. It's, that's the biggest thing I would say is just to talk and don't be afraid to talk and ask for help. Excellent, thank you. And whilst you were, were saying that, um, uh, we put together a quick graphic of, of some helplines that people can can go to uh, some of them are local like a, a new one that's launched in north yorkshire around young people um some of them are national as well so calm mind samaritans shout which is a tech service uh, there's a link to scarborough survivors which hannah is involved in and then uh, both north yorkshire county council and city of york um uh, links as well there so that they're, they're on on there hannah did you have anything to, to kind of add at the end there yeah, I think a big thing for me, like at the beginning of lockdown, there were so many people sharing things on Facebook, you know, um, I think someone quite famous shared, shared a quote, like, if you don't use this time to, you know, achieve something you've always wanted to achieve, then you're wasting your time. But I think that's, I think, you know, people need to ignore that and kind of get rid of any expectations that they've got on themselves for this time and just kind of just survive it. That's all we've got to do. Um, if you put all these expectations on yourself, then it's just going to cause unnecessary anxiety. So yeah, just to... uh, yeah, that's kind of a really kind of important point around the the almost the balance side of things. Of yes, it's great if you can achieve something, but actually um, don't put that that kind of pressure on yourself there. Um, I'll put the uh, that back up that uh, that screen there around all the, the links there. Um, and and kind of that um, uh, I think uh, wraps up um, uh, the evening in terms of the the time scale that we've got. Um, and I, I want to take this opportunity to really thank uh, the the guys on the panel um, for their time tonight, for being kind enough to to, to give us their time, um, but also for their the, their insight, their honesty that they've spoken with, um, the way that they've shared some some you know deeply personal stuff. Um, we really appreciate it and um, I've seen the feedback on the chat already and I know um, people there are, are, are really appreciating it. Um, there's no way of kind of giving you a round of applause, of applause which would be the traditional kind of British thing to, to do right now but um, uh, please know from, from North Yorkshire Sport that we are uh, extremely grateful for this and, and, and that will be reflected on the comments from people as, as well. Um, so, so thank you all um, uh, extremely for, for this. Um, before um, you all go and disappear, um, I'm just going to kind of reference a couple of things. Um, first of all, um, Damien's going to post in the chat box, and we'll put this on the follow-up email tomorrow, um, a, a feedback link. We really want you to take a minute or two, that's all it'll take, to let us know what you thought of tonight, what you took from it, um, what you might consider doing differently. Um, it helps us know that we're we're making an impact and as a charity we really need to know that we're doing that and um, so please do take that minute or two to to complete that and um, we're also going to post a link um to a uh, donations page on on virgin money giving now i will stress now we're not out here begging for people to donate but what we've set up is a link for tonight um which if you feel you are able to um and you want to donate we've set that up to split the money evenly between calm mind and north yorkshire sport and our mental health um, fundraising work and um, as i said no expectation on anyone that you have to do or anything like that but if you feel you're able and you want to spare that that, that pound or two then uh, that link has been um, put up as well um, and the last link i really wanted to share was um uh, for people in north yorkshire specifically is that if you want to have a follow-up conversation if you want to talk a bit more about how you might take some of those first steps about around being physically active then we would love to hear from you we, we've got a staff team who would be able to 
um, make contact back with you um, and talk through some of the options that you've got. So Damien's just posted the link there. Um, that's something quite new that we're, we're offering. Um, and we really just want to use that opportunity to, to have that conversation with you and say these are some of the ways you might get active. The guys tonight might have already given you that inspiration for, for doing that. Um, so that's it from me. That's the kind of last bits from me. Um, I, I'm going to leave the chat room open for a little bit whilst people disappear off and, and, and put a bit of background music on or something like that. But thank you once again to all the guys on the panel. Um, uh, stay safe and um, make the best of the rest of lockdown and hopefully we'll see you all on the, uh, on the other side um, where we can actually do something like this in person in the future. Um, uh, and to all the people that, that have tuned in, thank you um, very much for your, for your time.